This one's called Graceland, so I'm sure that kind of gives away where it happens. Thin, gauzy curtains filled with light were billowing in as sheer, as blue and golden as a cicada's wings. Yet he stood sweating and morose. He could feel his discomfort trickling like a shallow brown branch of the Mississippi down his body. His clothing was soaked by the heat of the Mississippi Delta. He'd never been to Memphis before. Standing now in front of the thermostat, still holding to a piece of their luggage, he discovered that the air conditioning didn't work. In his frustration, he threw the suitcase onto the bed on his way to bring in another. He knew he would turn around and leave if he only could, but she remained joyful despite his misery. She knew how to relax into the heat. She knew how not to fight it, how to let it hang on her like a thin, slippery garment. The trip had been her idea, and right now she was trying not to listen to him. She was walking toward the opened windows, hoping to see Elvis Presley Boulevard in the guitar-shaped swimming pool that she'd seen in the online brochure. Inside, the man was filling the bath. Outside, in the park, dark human shapes bent like pythons rested along the thick, dark arms of a bald cypress. There were smaller, flowering, southern magnolia trees, their blossoms standing up boldly against the heat. There was the sound of a western steel guitar, a piano accordion, and a washboard, leaking something by Paul Simon out from beneath the shade. And I see losing love is like a window in your heart. Everybody sees you're blown apart. Everybody feels the wind blow. The one singing and playing the guitar looked up at her standing in the window. She waved and smiled and stepped back into the room, hoping the man bathing would muster up guts enough to try. They'd been together for a year. One year. This trip was to celebrate their anniversary and to give them something they both wanted to hold on to. She hadn't told him yet that she was searching for a song. She'd learned there was no way to pull him from his misery. She had to coax him out. She had to lead him into believing that happiness was his own idea. Ordinarily, she hated this in people, this ordinary state of gloom. But something bound them, something unremarkable, so unremarkable that she didn't even know what it was. She was hoping to find it there in Memphis in some other sparkling form, something with music, some holding fabric that could bind them. There's no damned hot water either, he says from behind the bathroom door. Do you really want hot water? You don't want hot water, she says. No, but there should be hot water. Maybe the no air conditioning and the no hot water cancel each other out. We should at least have hot water. You'd think so, she says, trying to agree, doing what she can to keep the peace. Especially for what we're paying, to be close to some dead musician's grave. Elvis lives, she says. He'll always live. He's not just some dead musician. And we're not paying for this, I am. This is my treat, remember? Graceland and pink Cadillacs and what is it? Fried peanut butter and banana sandwiches? I bet we can't get one of those for less than 20 bucks around here. Do you want a grilled peanut butter and banana sandwich? You don't want a grilled sandwich. Who are you kidding? But he said nothing back. She heard not even his stir in the water. We could ride a paddle wheel. I think we must ride a paddle wheel while we're here, she said, looking at the What to Do in Memphis pamphlet on the coffee table. It's called the Memphis Queen. Let's ride the Memphis Queen, honey, shall we? As long as the Memphis Queen doesn't ride me, he says. You're awful, she says. Then she imagines him lying in the tub, his head underwater, breathing and not breathing. So awful, she says. Plenty of people agree with you. We need to go see Sun Records and Union Avenue and Beale Street, that's a must. It says in quotation marks that they've got catfish on the table, they've got gospel in the air, Honey, did you hear me? Honey, that sounds familiar. What's that from? Are you listening? Did you die in there? Yes, 
Tupelo, honey, I heard you. That's not what I said. You know what I say? I say this hotel isn't worth a tiddlywink. We should be closer to town for what this place is costing us. The closer to town, the more expensive. I just don't see why anyone like us should blow a wad like this on a, hell, on a hotel room such as we've got here when all we're gonna do is sleep in it. Even then, you're asleep, for God's sakes. Who's gonna sit in their room all day with their eyes open just to get their money's worth? I don't know. I just hope it's not you, honey. I hope it's not us. I just don't see why it's so important to spend so much on a room. For example, we could take all we're spending on this room and use it at home to make quite the monthly mortgage. We could have a pretty darn nice house for what we're paying here. Do you want a house? Should we start looking at houses? All in all, if you think about it, it's not like we'll ever remember anything more about this place than any other place just because it costs more. You saw the pictures in the brochures and it didn't cost a thing to look at, so what else do we get by being here? That's all I'm saying. Are you done? Please tell me you're done. What if I'm not done? What if I'll never be done? Then we're done, she whispers. Honey, it's nice here, she says. Probably the nicest place I've ever been. The nicest place I've ever taken me. Now she's sipping on ice water while she reads about the different things to see in town. She sees her image trapped in each of the ice cubes that are themselves trapped inside the glass. And you'll be asleep soon enough and you'll miss the whole thing. I'm not the one missing things right now, you are. And you don't need to put on airs here, honey. We don't know anybody here. You're here, I'm here, don't we know each other? And I'm not putting on airs, I just want something nice. I appreciate nice. It's like I take, it's not like I take things for granted, I want something nice to remember, that's all. We just got here, he says. Nothing to remember yet. Oh yes, there is, she says, and it's not anything nice. It's not anything pretty. Like the first thing we do is fight over how hot you are just as soon as we leave the airport, like it was my fault, like it was something I did on purpose just to aggravate you, and now we're fighting over this beautiful room. It's not beautiful, and I'm not fighting. <laughs> are you fighting? I'm just saying, I'm asking. How is this a good deal? You know all we're paying for is that damn swimming pool shaped like a damn guitar. How's that fair? I don't even swim. When life's not fair, you try harder. That's the reason we're here, isn't it? Only you know why we're here. This is all part of your big idea. Why are we here? To be here, she says. To be somewhere else for a change. Some place worth remembering. To see if we can just be here. To enjoy something without having to argue about it. Oops, he says. You think, she replies, but he won't hear her. How long are you going to be in there? If I get out, the heat is going to drop me straight to the end of my rope again. You were wearing the wrong clothes, that's all. You were stressed and walking too fast. You were carrying luggage and you were wearing the wrong clothes. I brought you some light shorts and some flip-flops. You'll feel much better. You can't fight the heat, so quit trying. You have to relax into it. Don't resist. Pretend you don't care. This is me we're talking about. You know my body runs hot. It's not something I have control over. From inside the bathroom, the man's voice echoes out at her like something from a memory. That's what I'm saying. It's hot, that's what it is. A lot of times, she feels like laughing at him when he is cranky, but she knows it won't fly to laugh at him. But now she is on holiday. They are both on holiday where things are supposed to be different, so she allows herself to try her luck. You're so funny when you get mad over such things. What things? Little things, things you can't control, like being too hot. I mean, who do you really have to be mad at over such things? That's another thing. You know I can't swim, yet the main reason you chose this place is because it has a pool. Everybody can swim, she tells him. No one ever taught you how, that's all. I can teach you. Imagine if you learned to swim while we're here. Wouldn't that be something? That would definitely be something worth remembering. 
Can you imagine learning how to swim in a giant guitar? I can't imagine swimming, he says. It's your trip. Don't work on me, work on you. You're the one who wanted to come down here. I'm only here for you. I'm talking about us. Do what you want to do, really. I can do what you want to do, so you decide. Honey, did you go to that website like I showed you on things to do? Did anything look good to you? If I looked up everything there was to do in Memphis, we wouldn't need to come down here, would we? You know what I mean? That's not what I mean, she says. But do you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, but I think I know what you mean. And if it is, then I don't like it. What do you think I mean? She is suddenly bothered by sleep, offering itself as a means for her escape. I just think, she lowers her voice again. He makes her tired. Her eyelids are bouncing down like butterflies. You're mean, she whispers. Sometimes you're just mean. I see that now. She gets up to lay his clothes out on the bed, then taps lightly on the bathroom door. I'll be outside waiting for you, honey. She leaves the glass filled with ice water, sweating on a nearby table. Where? Outside. In the park. Our balcony looks over. If you take too long, I won't wait for you. Then where will you be? I have no idea. That's what I aim to find out. Then the bolt in the door slips and slides profoundly as she leaves. Outside, another small band of men is lying in another large pocket of shade, holding to wrinkled brown paper bags as if that is what anchors them to the ground. Some are sleeping away the heat, saving their energy for the cooler evening hours. Quicker than she expected, her man is out of the tub and sitting beside her on the bench. But she refuses to look at him. I feel like the history of the world could lie in this place, she says. If only we could find it. Is there no history at home? It's been around as long as this place, hasn't it? That's different. That's not what I'm saying. Try to hear what I'm saying before you say what you're saying. Try that. What are you saying, he says. I'm just saying, I can see better here. I see more. What don't you see at home? That's what I'm saying. We can't see each other at home. Maybe you just don't like what you see. See, now that's what I'm saying. I need a drink. You have a drop of sweat, as gray as a rain cloud, hanging from the tip of your nose. She has never not wanted to touch him more than this. You see those guys over there? The bums? Look at them looking back at us. Do you think we're half as interesting as they think we are? Half as interesting and twice as gullible, he said. I think they think we're tourists who don't know what to do or where to go. And they'd be right, wouldn't they? Wouldn't this be a lovely place to get married? You want to get married? I'm just saying, for anyone, wouldn't it be nice to get married in a place as big, as exciting, and as colorful as Memphis? We don't have birth certificates. Relax, she says, it's just a thought, a terribly romantic thought. It's the perfect place for such things. I'm just saying we don't have our birth certificates, that's all. But what if we did, she says. Wouldn't that be fun? What if we had everything we needed? What if all we had to do was go to some justice of the peace and say, I do? Just tell him we wanted to be married like we were ordering something simple from a menu. Isn't that something nice to think about? That it could be that simple? To think like two people who thought they were right for each other? They wouldn't have to think about anything else. They would have no hesitation one way or the other. What good does it do to think about things we can't do? But what if we could, she says, and she thinks she can hear music coming up the street. We need more good things to remember. Do you hear that? I heard you, he says. No, music, she whispers. It's coming closer, hush. I can barely hear it. I can't hear it, he says. Wait. 
You have to listen for it. I don't hear anything, he says, standing up suddenly. And I don't really need to hear anything right now either. All I want to hear is the sound of a cold drink filling my glass. What I need is a drink. A mint julep or a hurricane or whatever damn thing they serve down here. Anything cold with lots of alcohol, he says. You like whiskey, she says. That's your drink. Anything American on the rocks, that's what you like. Though he doesn't know why, there is something about her knowing what he drinks that delights him in some small way. Are you coming with me? Let me buy you a mint julep. No, she says, I don't like mint. Then, after knowing they had parted and didn't need to say anything else, she says, there's a song for everyone, you know. That's what I think. What do you think? I don't think I know what you're thinking. In fact, since we got here, I don't even know you. I think we have a song, and I think it's here, and I think we'll find it if we try. It's the only way to find it. It's here somewhere, I know it. Up until we leave, we have to look for it. And who knows, maybe looking for it will be enough if we do it together. Enough for what? What are you saying? Just keep searching till we run out of time. But we need to get going. We need to get started. We didn't need to come all this way just to look at songs. We have music at home. You have all those albums you don't listen to at home. Songs are the same everywhere. I won't believe that. It's not the same. Why not? The music is the same, but we're not the same. We're not the same at all. We're different here from who we are at home, or at least I hoped we could be. I'd hoped we'd be different when we got here. Different? You've certainly been different. I need to know we can be different if that's what we want. What good would that do? I don't want to keep being who we've been, she says. If there's supposed to be something good buried in what you're saying, I don't see it. It all sounds bad. You're saying we're not who you want us to be, so what are you saying? That we can be. I need a drink, he says, and he walks away. That's what he said, and that's when he walked away. Not long after he'd gone, the group of musicians lying in the cypress tree started tuning their instruments. The drinkers with the brown paper bags were still lying on the ground in the shade of the banyan tree. The musicians were still held up in the cypress tree. The guitar player dropped out of the tree like fallen fruit. He began walking toward the woman seated alone on the bench, looking down between her feet at the ground. When she hears the sound of his guitar, she looks up. The guitarist seems to be walking toward her. He is wearing blue suede shoes and singing a tune by Mark Cohn. Then I'm walking in Memphis, walking with my feet 10 feet off of Beale, walking in Memphis, but do you really feel the way I feel? He was timing the delivery of his song to match the distance from him to the girl. When he finished singing, he was standing at her feet. I'm sorry, she says, I don't have any money. Pardon me, Cher, I don't want any money. You've been with that cat for long, have you? A year. One year tomorrow. Anything I can play for you to help you feel better by tomorrow? You like the blues? You like Paul Simon, mon coeur? He has a very good, uplifting song about the blues. You look like you like Paul Simon. He sits on the ground in front of her, his steel guitar lying across his lap. Who doesn't like Paul Simon? This one is even Paul Simon's favorite. It goes like this he says. Then his whole body comes to life. He starts to strum and slap and knock upon his silver guitar. The Mississippi Delta was shining like a national guitar. I am following the river down the highway through the cradle of the Civil War. Do you think you could put my name in there somewhere? What name? Cher or Mon Cher. I like what you call me. That's me. Yes, Mon Cher. Good. I like that. And something about the Delta Queen and walking down Beale Street in Memphis looking for Sun Records. And your friend? What about him? Him? What about him? I feel like I'm in the middle of something new. 
like I'm learning how to swim all alone inside this giant guitar. <laughs> 